important uh, and this is the first chapter for the uh, organic chemistry that belongs to the organic chemistry and if i'm saying uh, that this is the basic of organic chemistry okay not only this chapter is important for the 10th standard but it is important for the others other standards means 11 12th also because this is the first chapter in the 11th and 12th standard we're going to have a separate book for uh, organic chemistry okay so it is important that here in this 10th standard we are going to have the only one chapter but in the 10th in 11th standard and 12th standard we're going to have four to five chapters means a separate book for uh, for each class in 11th and 12th, the organic chemistry, okay? So it is important for you that you must study this chapter thoroughly. And moreover, that uh, in this chapter, what we're going to discuss is that how carbon is going to make bonds, what are uh, what are the types of uh, compound that carbon is going to make, bond their chemical property, we are naming, and many more we're going to discuss, okay? So let's start studying. First of all, if I'm talking that... Uh, about the carbon and its compound chapter. Carbon is very versatile in nature. And we studied carbon because uh, as you know that carbon, okay, carbon is one of is one of the chapter uh, or we can say that why we are just studying the carbon and its compound, why not the aluminum and its compound, why not the sulfur and its compound, why not the silicon and its compound, why we are especially studying. So we're going to discuss it later, first of all, if I'm talking about the carbon, the carbon exists in the atmosphere in, in the form of CO2 in 0.03% and in earth crust at 0 at 0 0.02% in the form of coal, petroleum, etc. Okay. Carbon alone has 3 million compounds. That's why we have a separate branch of chemistry. We have three three branch of chemistry, the physical chemistry, the organic chemistry, and the organic chemistry. In physical chemistry, we generally study the mole concept, volume, pressure, molarity, cubism. Okay. In organic chemistry, we are just going to study about the that periodic table. In organic chemistry, we studied about the periodic table that how elements are arranged. But in organic chemistry, we are going to study the hydrocarbon, the compounds of hydrogen and carbon and their derivatives. And what are derivatives? We are going to discuss it later. So please note it down each and everything that is written on the slides. Noted. No one
ओके Let you first listen to me when I ask you to write. Then you have to write it. Okay. So what I'm saying here is that if you see that this is the electronic configuration that I have written here for the first twenty elements. Okay. And if you see that carbon is the first element, which is going to have four valence electron in its outer motion. Wow. What is the benefit of having four electron in its in in its valence? What is the benefit of having four electron in its valence? The benefit is that that it can make bonds with four. It is tetravalent. It can make first element to have four electron in its outer motion. Other is the next one is silicon. So what is that thing that is making carbon so versatile? The first thing is that it it's tetravalency. It has four valence electrons and it can make bond with four similar or different atoms at a single time. Means it can make maximum four bonds, which is making it so versatile. Means other elements like for example lithium. Can make only single bond. It can make double bond. Means two bonds. It can make three bonds. Nitrogen has five, but it can make three because nitrogen need to complete its octet, so it can share only three electrons. Oxygen can share only two, so it can make two two single bonds. It can make only one single bonds. It can make zero. Then again one, then two, then three, and then four. Carbon is the first one which is going to have it four electrons in its outer motion, and it require four electron. Complete its octet, so it can make four bonds. So here is a tetravalency. It means it it is having tetravalency and it can make bonds with four similar or different kinds of atoms. Okay, uh, at a single time. So this the second one is that the small size. If I'm comparing it with the uh with this one that you can see that it has a small size. If I'm having this one, this is the silicon atom and this is the carbon atom. If you see that because of a small size, the outermost shell's electrons are nearer to the nucleus because nucleus hold the electrons. Nucleus it has the responsibility. Nucleus is positively charged, and it has the responsibility to hold the electron. So electrons are negatively charged, and they are held by nucleus. So if the nucleus is nearer to the bonded pair of electron, then it the the force will be stronger. Okay, the force will be stronger. Okay, so the bond will be stable. Here in the in case of silicon, silicon is the one which is having one extra shell. The electron configuration of silicon is two eight four because of extra shell, the eight electron in this in this shell, it is making its bigger size and due to bigger size the distance is larger from the nucleus, large distance from the nucleus. As a result of which the the nucleus force will not reach to this. One. The effective nuclear force is less as compared to here. If the nucleus is closer and if if the nucleus is far, then it it will exert less force. Okay, Ex exert less force. But you can see you can uh, you can. Uh, Consider one question here. Uh, uh, means a question can arise. Uh, we can say simply one question we can arise or raise from here is that that the nucleus of carbon is going to have only six proton because proton and electrons are same in numbers. Okay, the protons are positively charged. So in case of carbon, if I am explaining carbon, it has six proton. But in case of of silicon, it has atomic number fourteen and it has fourteen proton. So we can say one thing here that, sir, it's okay, but uh, here it is having less. It it is closer to the nucleus, so it's okay. It's, it is closer to the nucleus, so that's why effective force is more. But here it is more powerful. The nucleus is more powerful. So what if an extra shell is there? So what if an extra shell is here? Its nucleus is more powerful, more than twice. It has six proton. It has fourteen proton. So the nucleus of silicon is more powerful. It is having extra positive charge, so it can hold. But the reason is that that when an electron revolve, like for example, here is the two electrons in the let this is the nucleus. In case of carbon, this is the nucleus, and they are having the first shell, first shell, and the second shell is the outermost shell. In case of carbon, the second shell is the outermost shell. One, two, three, four. 
But in case of this one, silicon, this extra electrons in the shell, when they revolve, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so they make an electron cloud. They make an electron cloud. When they revolve, they make an electron cloud. Okay. Like you see the fan blade. Like you see the fan blade. You see fan blade. When it revolve, then it create a circle, a cloud. Okay. So same when electron revolve, they form a cloud. As a result of which, this nucleus being powerful, but it is not visible to the outermost shell electrons with that force. Like for example, on a cloudy day, the sun is rising with same power, with same hotness. But due to clouds coming in, in between the sun and the person on the earth, okay? So the hotness of that sun will not be uh, experienced by the human beings, okay? Why? Because the clouds are intermediate. Clouds are coming in between the sun and... So on the cloudy day, we don't feel so much heat. Like on, on non-cloudy day in summers. Why? Why? Because... Uh, because... This same thing is happens happening here also. These electrons, when they revolve, they form an electron cloud. And this nucleus is not visible to these shells electrons. As a result of which, even though the nucleus is powerful, but it that powerful nucleus is not uh, the, the power of that nucleus is not experienced by this by these electrons, the bonded pair of electrons. And this this in chemistry, this effect we in chemistry we call it shielding effect. Shielding effect means that the inner electrons shield the nucleus and the positive charge of the nucleus is not experienced by the outermost shell's electron. That is called, uh, that, that we call it, okay? You are now you understood? Understood? So we, we say that in carbon, there are only two electrons that are shielding. So they, are, they cannot shield in good manner. But there are extra, two is already here like in carbon, but these extra electrons, have more shielding effect. So in car carbon, due to poor shielding effect, poor, this is poor, this is poor shielding effect, poor shielding effect. But here in silicon, this is good shielding effect. So in carbon, there is a poor shielding effect as a result of which these electrons, uh, sorry, the effective nuclear force to the bonded pair of electron is more and the bond is stable. So due to small size, the carbon effective nuclear force in carbon to the bonded pair of electron is more this help to make it bond stable and strong. And second reason is that because of poor shielding effect, the carbon, the carbon uh, electrons, then silicon. Means this is the second reason that uh, because of poor shielding effect, it has poor shielding effect. That's why if we compare it, then the silicon, that why silicon, silicon is also tetravalent, but why silicon cannot make millions of compounds. The reason behind it that in silicon, there is a good shielding effect as a result of which the bond is not stable. The effective nuclear force is less. So the bond is stable, is not stable, and the bond break. But here, there is the first of all the there are two shells, the small size because of a small size, the bonded pair of electron on the outermost shell electrons are closer to the nucleus. They are holded tightly by the nucleus. And secondly, here is poor shielding effect. So nucleus is visible to these electrons, and if nucleus is visible, its force is also ex experienced by these bonded pair of electron, and they can be easily hold. The bond will be, it can be easily hold. Okay. So the next reason, if I'm talking here is Okay, so like here in silicon, I'm experiencing 14 electrons here, but here in, in this one, there is the size is less and the nucleus is visible to them. Next is covalent bond. Covalent bond is the, if I'm talking, what is covalent bond? Covalent bond is the second strongest bond in the chemistry. Okay, it form, it form bond by, because it cannot lose all four electrons, it cannot gain four electrons. So what it does, it loses, it, it shares electrons. It shares electrons. We'll discuss that why it cannot lose all four electrons, we'll discuss why it can gain four electrons. So we will discuss it later. But uh, here, uh, it make bond uh, by sharing of electron, not the, not unless the, or we can say that unlike the uh, ionic bond, if I'm talking about that ionic bond is a bond which is formed between metals and non-metal. It is not such like, it is not such like that. Okay. So covalent bond, it, it, which is the second strongest bond after the ionic bond. So the covalent bond is the second strongest bond after the ionic bond. That's why it is a stable bond. The carbon make covalent bonds. That is stronger, second strongest bond. So the compound formed by carbon is also stable. Okay. So these are the three reasons that why it's show 
that it, that it shows the uh, we can simply say that it carbon is able to show um, or form large number of compounds. The first reason is small size because of a small size and uh, uh, poor shielding effect. The effective nuclear force is more, and because of poor uh, because of and because and for we can simply say that because of that the bonded pair of electrons are closer to the nucleus and they can exert more force on the bonded pair of electrons. Uh, and the bond is stable. Second reason is that it is tetravalent and because of this tetravalent, it can make a uh, bond with four similar and dissimilar kinds of atoms. And, uh, and the third one, if I'm talking here, is that uh, that covalent bond. That covalent bond, it makes covalent bond and because of that covalent bond, uh, which is the second strongest bond, the bond is stable, okay? Got it? So start writing from here. From here. Why carbon is so much in nature? Done. Yes.
Done? Yes. No, this one. When you're done, please let me know. Done? Sumaya, Ibar, and Nabiha done. Are you writing this one? Yes, sir.
done this one? Yes. Yes. Why are you not saying that we have done this? Not this one also. Not this one. Bad, are you writing? Why have you turned off your camera? And so, why are you? Why have you turned off your camera? So, why are you there? Yes, sir. Are you writing? Yes. And you, Nabiha? Yes, sir. I'm writing. Moving to the next portion is, is this one that what is catenation property? What is catenation property? So catenation is a self-linking property of an element. Like you see that self-linking means the property by which an element can make bond with its own type of element. The same type of elements. The same kind of atoms. Like for example, oxygen show this catenation property in oxygen molecule up to two atoms. In chlorine show this catenation property here up to two atoms. In ozone, oxygen shows this catenation property, self-linking property up to three atoms. In sulfur, it shows up to eight. Sulfur in S8 molecule, it shows up to eight atoms. Phosphorus shows this property up to five atoms. But carbon due to its above three property, the previous three properties, small size, tetravalency, and covalent bond. Small size, tetravalency, and covalent bond, it can make... Yeah, it shows catenation property, the self-linking property up to thousands of carbon atoms. Thousands of carbon atoms can join together in a straight chain, in branch, in rings. So they can join like this, carbon-carbon straight chain. In the rings, they can join like this, rings. Or they can join like the branch. And this property is called catenation property. What is catenation property? Catenation property is the self-linking property of an element. The self-linking property of an element, by the virtue of it, it can make bond with its own kind of atoms. Like oxygen, oxygen can make bond, carbon, carbon can make bond, nitrogen, nitrogen can bond. They are all showing catenation property. But due to small size, covalent bond and tetravalency, carbon showed this catenation property to the maximum extent. As a result, carbon can make bonds in branches, strain chain and rings. Okay. Understood? So this is the reason that uh, carbon is so versatile in nature because the above, the previous three reasons are responsible for showing or for the versatile nature of carbon. That is the first element which is small in size and having high effective nuclear force because, uh, okay, and it, it, make, it is tetravalent and it makes uh, covalent bond. And as a result of which, it can make bonds in rings, state chain, and, and it shows the catenation properties to the maximum extent. So, uh, start writing from here so that you can understand catenation. And it make the example so that you can understand this all. Write this rough work and then we shall be starting the writing the definitions.
dan oke okay. No, 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 this one. And memorize the definition of catenation property. Question comes at what is catenation property and why do carbon show catenation property to maximum extent? Done.
sẽ đơn Now the question, uh, just memorize it, please. Memorize the definition of catenation because it is very, very important. The first question is going to come from this one. I'm just going to give you the two minutes. Just memorize the definition and moving the next question. Okay. Done. Memorized. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Yes, Ayan. Speak. Uh, it is the self-limiting property of element by which an element can be bond with its similar atom, uh, but in one case of carbon due to small size. Covalent bond and tetravalency carbon show catenation property to the maximum extent. Uh, it forms it makes bond in the in the form of branches, tree chain, and ring. Yes, you Ibad, speak. Uh, it is the self making pro uh, property of element by which an uh, element can bond with its uh, own kind of atoms. Uh, but in some cases, the carbon, due to small size or like uh, covalent bond and uh, tetravalency carbon, uh, it shows like maximum extent something. Uh, calculation property to its maximum extent. Okay, next, yes, you, Maha. So, catenation pro uh, property is a uh, self linking property of an element by which an element can bond with its own kind of atoms. But in case of carbon, uh, the size is small. Therefore, the uh, covalent bond and tetravalency carbons will show catenation property to the maximum extent, which therefore its bond will be made in rings, branches, uh, state chains, etc. Yes, Eugenia. Uh, catenation is a self linking property of um a property of an element element by which an element can make bonds with its own kind of atom um, but in the case of carbon uh, carbon due to the small size co covalent bond and tetravalency uh, carbon show catenation property to the maximum extent which in result makes bonds as rings branches and straight chains yes you so my yes you so my Catenation is a self-linking property of an atom. Where they can uh, create bonds with atoms of similar kinds. Okay. And why do carbon show this catenation property to the maximum extent? 
Why do carbon show that this catenation property to the maximum extent? Because of the small size. Tetravalency and covalent bond. Okay, memorize it properly. Yes, Next, if the, if the question comes that why both carbon and silicons are tetravalent, but silicon can make chain up to seven to eight carbon atoms uh, joined together, but carbon can make chain up to hundred of thousands of carbon atoms bonded together. The reason behind it that that because of a small size, okay, because of a small size, uh, uh, means uh, here we have carbon has two shells. The small size means how how carbon has small size than silicon. Because carbon has two shells and silicon has three shells. So because of an extra shell, silicon has an extra shell size. Okay. So here, because of a small size, the bonded pair of electron has more effective nuclear force than the bonded pair of electron in silicon. As a result, the more stable bond is found in carbon than in silicon. Okay. Note it down. And second is the second reason is that in carbon the shielding effect is less than the uh, the, than the silicon because the carbon in silicon there is a good shielding effect but we can use in carbon the word the appropriate word here we use is poor in carbon the shielding effect is poor than silicon is poor than silicon so the effective nuclear force the effective nuclear force in, or the nucleus force is also called z effect in chemistry we call it z effect. in carbon is more than silicon so the bond is the bond is so the bond is more stable. So the bond uh, to the sorry to the pair of bonded electrons is more. So hence the bond is more stable. Hence the bond is more stable. Put it down here.
So I was having network problem. So I was getting disconnected. So done. Okay. So everyone done? Yes or no? Sir, I was test right now, Kennedy. Yes, done. Okay. 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 okay thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. So those who have done, they can leave, okay? Hello everyone, how are you? Hadi Arhan, everyone. Rayan, everyone, how are you? Is I'm audible to you, everyone? Yes, sir. So, dear students, today we shall be going to discuss.